the reality is, is that the likelihood of in, uh, impact on, on liquidity within the broader marketplace comes after the resolution, after the compromise in Congress comes, when we actually see the Treasury General account rebuild and liquidity start to rebuild within that Treasury General account. What the Fed will do next. What, 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 are your, what are you thinking just overall about the economy, how that plays out with the market? I think, you know, for the next few quarters, the economy can actually do pretty well. The inflation versus recession uh, uh, debate is not the, the real issue for us. Uh, we, we think that uh, uh, we are more worried by the uh, liquidity situation. Where the economy is headed. Are you curious about the market outlook in 2023? How will liquidity impact Bitcoin and other assets? And what will be the Fed's next decision? To answer all these questions, in today's video, Raul Pal dives deep into the macro picture of the economy, discussing the impact of liquidity on Bitcoin. To know more details, stay tuned till the end of the video. And if you want to stay up to date with the latest crypto insights, markets, and economy, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. All right, are you ready? Let's dive right in. What's interesting is we ask everybody for their trade ideas. And yes, there's a few, there was a few around um, that were kind of in line with where a lot of people thinking. But what was interesting is there was very few big macro calls. A lot of people were looking at specific sectors like shipping or whatever. And that tells you that people even that group, which is there's some pretty well-known hedge fund managers and big family offices and asset managers, aren't exactly sure what to think. Now, I've had a very strong view for a while, which was that liquidity was everything. And I wrote all of this up in that everything code that I've talked a bit about that interview with Nathaniel Whittingmore. I went through quite a lot of what the everything code is, um, but that's still kind of exclusive to GMI. But liquidity is everything. All of my forward-looking indicators have been suggesting that liquidity is going to keep rising and that it would drive crypto and tech more than anything else. And that's basically been the story of the year so far. Um, and I think that that continues. And that's confused a lot of people. The one trade that's confused me is the bond trade, and that's confused a lot of people. Bond yields should have fallen by now, and they still haven't. But I think this is to do with the debt ceiling issue, which is the other confusing thing. Because the debt ceiling issue has some real risks around it, and we don't really know how to price them. All we do know is people are pretty bearish around it. Um, and I think that's reasonable, too, to have hedged around it, because we don't know what can happen. But the chances are that anything that causes a paralysis of financial markets will lead to that that expression I always use, more cowbell, more stimulus to come. Raul Pal forward-looking indicators have been consistently pointing towards one thing, liquidity continuing to rise and making a massive impact on markets. But here's the kicker. It has caused confusion for many people. It's like trying to solve a mind-bending puzzle. You see, bond yields should have decreased by now, right? But they haven't. The uncertainty surrounding the debt ceiling issue is to blame. Pricing the risks associated with it is no easy task, and there's a general bearish sentiment in the air. The macro landscape is a complex beast, my friends, with various factors influencing different market dynamics. Hey, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more captivating videos. Stay informed, stay curious. Let's get into the next clip now. I'm going to run through a couple of charts very quickly just to show some of the things that are on my radar screen so people can think about. So I'm going to start with my liquidity index. So this is the Global Macro Investor Le Weekly Liquidity Index. That's basically around the G5 central bank balance sheets. That we have our financial conditions index, which is based around the dollar rates, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff, which leads this, as does ISM. And it suggests that liquidity is going to keep rising all the way through this year. And the Everything Code suggests it actually keeps rising all the way through till the end of 2025. So yes, we might have some stumbling blocks. Yes, we might have some hurdles. But liquidity going forwards as the economy slows down and the central banks start increasing their activity, that will drive asset prices higher. So that's the first chart I wanted to show you. So that's the liquidity chart. 
Why liquidity matters is this chart. This is the chart of the NASDAQ against that same liquidity index. That's the tightest correlation I've ever seen, and it explains 97.5% of all the movements in the NASDAQ is liquidity. Mm -hmm. And this is around this currency debasement idea. The more the central banks print, the more you're changing the denominator, not the actual value of the asset themselves. So again, the only assets that have really gone up in balance sheet terms are technology, the NASDAQ, and other like the exponential age stocks, and crypto. Also, actually, interesting enough, so is luxury goods. That there's a reason Bernard Arnault is the richest man in the world is because what does he sell? He sells scarcity, right? In a world where you're de devaluing the denominator, scarce things go up more in price. So Bernard Arnault's balance sheet, um, his um, bank account goes up every week. So that's another chart for you to show. Valuations keep going up. The market goes up. You don't really understand it. You don't want to get involved. So you stay out of it. You start to look for smaller opportunities and you miss the big thing. And it's only until I started to understand what was driving it that it was driven by, A, this massive technological revolution going on, but also the Fed balance sheets and the global central bank balance sheets. Once I understood it, it became much easier to just buy it. And also, I also did a lot of work in the everything code to figure out that P ratios and being driven actually by the balance sheet and global M2. It's all monetary phenomena. And it's not about it's not about earnings anymore. Everything is driven by one thing. According to Raoul Powell, liquidity is on the rise, and it's not just a short-term trend. We're talking about liquidity continuing to surge throughout this year and beyond, possibly until the end of 2025. That's a long stretch, my friends. It's a tight correlation, my friends, between the NASDAQ and the liquidity index, indicating that currency debasement is at play. The more central banks print money, the more they change the denominator, not the actual value of the assets themselves. Talk about a mind-blowing revelation. So, what does this mean for tech stocks and cryptocurrencies? Well, my friends, they've been riding the wave of liquidity and experiencing significant increases in balance sheet terms. As central banks take action to support the economy, they expand their balance sheets and inject liquidity into the market. And guess what? That liquidity finds its way into assets, driving their prices higher. So, what can we learn from these charts, my fellow investors? Well, liquidity matters a great deal. And let's not forget the power of scarcity. In a world where everything seems abundant, scarce assets truly stand out. I keep saying uh, this 50% correction in equities can't happen because simply they just expand the balance sheet. And the denominator takes care of the fall, and they rise. So it, it just simply can't happen. The only way that it could happen is if we see massive quantitative tightening. But then the economy goes down the toilet, and they've got the unemployment side of the equation, the inflation side. So it, it just can't happen right now. Now, that's not mean this will stay forever, but it's a situation that quantitative easing is used as a way to pay the debts. Uh, and particularly the interest payments on the government debt. And that was, again, part of this everything code that everybody reset their interest rates to zero in 2009. Everybody, every country. It was like a global reset. I only realized it recently that that was the global reset. And so everybody's now in this debt cycle of every three to five years of having to roll the debt. The interest payments get monetized, and that is the increase in the balance sheets. It, it, it almost exactly works out for the US, the UK, Japan. Europe, etc. They're all just the monetization of the interest payments. According to Raoul Powell, a 50% correction in equities is unlikely to occur. Why? Well, it all boils down to the magic of central banks and their balance sheets. You see, whenever there's a potential decline in asset prices, central banks step in and expand their balance sheets. And guess what? That expansion offsets any potential fall ensuring that asset prices continue to rise. But hold on a minute. This scenario is only possible if we don't witness massive quantitative tightening. But here's the catch. Such tightening would have detrimental effects on the economy. We're talking about high unemployment rates and rampant inflation. Trust me, that's not a situation anyone wants to find themselves in. 
As we conclude our exploration of the market landscape, we are left with lingering questions. Will liquidity continue to rise, shaping the trajectory of assets like Bitcoin? How will the uncertainty surrounding the debt ceiling impact bond yields? Can central banks maintain the delicate balance to support asset prices without triggering detrimental effects on the economy? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates on crypto and economy. Also, be sure to give a big thumbs up to this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Adios.